This is my bench test setup for the six port selector valve um, that is not functioning as described in the documentation that came with it. So I want to give a little bit of demonstration of what's going on with it. Um, so with this setup, we've got the valve over here and I have the ground going to pin D and 12 volt going to uh, pin E, which will is also being read from the meter, so we can read the voltage directly what's going to the motor at the time. Right now the power source is turned off. Going over here to the power source, this is a prototype board for a vehicle ECU, but I am using the ground pins and the additional 12 volt pins over here to simulate um, the switching that would happen inside the vehicle. So since I don't have a double pull, double throw switch, which is what was uh, documented in the in, in the specs for this for this motor. Um, I am using two single pole double throw relays and a single pole double throw switch that is basically functioning in the exact same manner that a double pole double throw switch would. And that whenever I flip this switch on, it energizes both of the coils inside these relays, which will in turn invert the voltage that's going over here to the motor, which should either extend or retract the valve inside, depending on its previous position. In order to demonstrate the functionality of that, I have an air hose hooked up to it, which is doing nothing more than just to an airline that I'm gonna run a small amount of pressure through. And when air comes through it, it'll, it'll move this paper. So to start off the demonstration, right now the air is hooked up to the bottom port, which would indicate the rear tank uh, flow, fuel flow from the rear tank. So I'm gonna start the airflow here to demonstrate. So I have a small amount of air going through, and as you can see, there is no air coming through this port because this previous position was to use the front port. I'm going to go ahead and turn the power on. Adjust these terminals so they can get the correct reading. Okay, so we're about 11 volts right now, which is plenty enough to move this motor. So 11 volts is going exact right to this motor, which indicates that the top valve is what should be taking an air, which would explain why, since air is flowing through the bottom valve, this is not moving. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change the position of the switch, which will inverse the voltage. As you can see, the voltage now at the switch is negative 11 volts, so the polarity has been reversed, which means the motor should be extended so the air will flow through this bottom port and out. However, you can tell that it is not the case right now. In order to get that to happen, I need to turn off the power. So this drops, the voltage to this drops all the way to zero volts, and I must wait three seconds, or at least till it's all the way down to zero, until I can turn the power back on. Once the voltage has completely dropped and a moment of time has passed and then the voltage has been reapplied, then the valve exchanges positions. So I'm gonna demonstrate right now a quick switch of the power off and back on to demonstrate that the motor does not change positions. So you can see it dropped and then came right back up to 11 volts. However, there is no air blowing through the bottom port. Now if I turn it off, drops all the way down to zero. Now I turn it back on. Now you can see the air as coming through the bottom port. The same happens when I want to change it back to use the front port or the top port. I'll flip this switch up. The voltage went from negative 11 back to positive 11. And air is still flowing through the bottom valve. So I must turn this off. Wait about three seconds. Turn it back on, well, now you can see the air is no longer coming through the bottom port and it's going through the top as anticipated.